first movie we did, Maranta, was kind of more uh, drama based. There was like there was martial arts and action in there, but it started very heavily with drama. But in the raid, we decided we'd already done the whole sort of introduction of the martial arts in the first movie. Already done the introduction to culture and tradition, and so we wanted to kind of cut to the chase and do something which was much more streamlined and much more sort of you know aggressive. And right out the gate, we sort of kick in with the action. I think more relevant to the raid. I think the one film that's kind of uh, there was a, the benchmark film when I was growing up was probably John Woo's Hard Boiled. Um, it's such a sort of classic action film. It's probably one of the finest action films ever made to me, to be honest. And I still don't think that, that nothing's kind of come close to beating that film for me yet. So, yeah, Hard Boiled. Um, ever since I was a kid, my every weekend my dad would sort of go to the video shop and rent out something new. And the, th the approach that he had was like nothing was sort of nothing was too high high art, nothing was too lowbrow. If it sort of entertained us, and that was it, that's all that mattered really. So we get such a wide eclectic mix of films that would, you know, come in through the door every weekend, and it was, you know, a range of stuff like from Kurosawa films to you know classic American gangster films, but then also some Jackie Chan and some Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, and all of those would kind of just like fuse together and be this one big mix of things. And so I think like that was the sort of defining thing for me of what made me love. The idea of making films was came from the enthusiasm my dad had for it as a viewer of watching those films and then trying to figure out ways that I could be a part of that world then. I originally started in traditional animation on Little Mermaid, Beauty and Beast, Lion King, and those so um, watching computers come into it and really change how we look at animation as filmmakers, where we can really um, take that camera and move it all around, and it can also uh, affect the storytelling as well. It sort of broadens the horizons um, across the board, but I still love traditional nonetheless. This is um, fantastic. I mean, IADT invited me over, um, and uh, being part of this is very exciting for me to to get out of the States and see all these incredible filmmakers that are here from all over Europe, but especially in Ireland, the stuff I've been seeing um, professionally and from the students has been incredibly diverse and it's been a lot of fun. These days, you know, with social network and all that, that in a way, even though that's like a modern sort of very sort of contemporary development in some ways, it's like going with the film and traveling to theaters and talking to people, the constituency to those theaters and those cities are really important. So I think this kind of festival is priceless, you know. Every film I've done has been a labor of love and this was no exception. Hunky Dory was tricky. It looks like a simple film, but actually it was quite a technically difficult one in as much as we made a decision to do all the, it's kind of a musical, right? So make all the music uh, in the film live. Uh, so every kid who plays an instrument in the film plays that instrument for real and all the, voc all the vocals are live. So that was kind of part of the, uh, of if you like the rules that you set yourself before you start making a film, and uh, we stuck to them, and it was that made uh, that made um, us try very hard to get the, those performances just spot on. And then the other technical problem with Hunky Dory was that it was set in the se summer of '76, which is you know, the hottest summer in living memory, and we shot it in Wales in the summer of 2010, which is, was not the hottest summer in living memory. In fact, it was one of the wettest. So we were just running around, kind of everybody inside, everybody outside. It was a real kind of. Um, it was kind of a really tough film to make. Well, the story is about, it's kind of a remaking of the Butch Cassidy and Sundance story, which everybody knows well from the Robert Redford and Paul Newman movie. Um, it's a reworking of that legend and I play at a place and um, it was a movie shot in Bolivia so we all went to Bolivia to, for the shooting of that and I had um, another Irish actor called Park Delaney and another Irish actor called Stephen Ray so it was a great movie and um, I was really happy to be a part of it. I'm playing a Pinkerton's agency guy who's haunting Butch Cassidy but we've got old you know like Butch Cassidy's now in his 60s and Heaven for Fend, so is uh, the Pinkerton's agency guy. Right? So that's really what it's about, and they get, they're getting weary of the chase. We're, we're good at doing movies, not just watching them, we're good at making them. We have wonderful crews in this city, they're as good as anyone in the world. Uh, we need the proper tax incentives to get people to come 
in here and make movies. Uh, we have great actors. We're, we're set up for the movie industry and uh, no modern civilized city was right without the movies. And we have fantastic audiences. I mean, traditionally, Dublin people go to the movies all the time. Mm -hmm.